In this tech tip video, we'll talk about the pod droop and rear ride height on the X1222. And this is set in the same way as on previous X12 cars. The pod droop is set by the length of the shock, and the preload on the spring, that will have a direct influence on the rear pod droop. The ride height on this car is adjusted with rear uh, axle inserts, which are mounted into the rear bulkheads. The same as on the X1221. And the ride height can be set in steps of 0.5 millimeter. So of course this has to be set in relation to the tire size. And especially you'll need to make adjustments to the ride height depending on the wear of the tire. So if your tires are wearing down, getting smaller, you'll need to use a different insert to raise the car up to achieve the same ride height as before. So we adjust the ride height quickly and easily with the inserts in the rear. And um, about the ride height, I would recommend running as low of a ride height as you possibly can. Especially if the track is flat, I would try to run as close to 3 millimeters of ride height in the front as possible. And usually 0.2 millimeters higher in the rear, so 3.2, or 3.2 in the front and 3.4 in the rear, if the track is flat. If you're running on a bumpy track, I would recommend racing the car up. So going 0.2 or 0.4 millimeters higher, both in the front and rear, to have more clearance for the chassis so that it doesn't touch the ground so much over the bumps. Other than that, uh, let's talk about how the pod droop is set and how it influences the handling. So what is pod droop? Pod droop is the difference between the suspension at its full upward travel to your static ride height. So let's check it out. Here we have on this side 3.8 millimeters of ride height. 3.6 actually. So that we then lift the rear suspension upwards and we check the ride height again. So it's 4.6. This means that we have a one millimeter difference between the static ride height here to the ride height as fully upward travel of the rear suspension. And it's one millimeter, that's the pod droop at this point. That's a really good basic setting for most tracks. You can add pod droop in the rear to make the car roll around more, which will make the car more aggressive. It will transfer more weight from the front to the back and it can help to generate more grip on lower grip surfaces. For higher grip tracks, especially with a solid axle in the rear, it can be beneficial to use less pod droop. So 0 0.8, 0 0.6, even 0.5 millimeters. So a lot less than the one millimeter that we have on the car now. But you'll have to fine tune this for the conditions that you're racing on. And as you can see, it's very easy to adjust. Um, all you have to do to increase the pod droop is to lengthen the shock by turning this uh, collar here. So let's see now, we've lengthened the shock, but this also means that the ride height is longer, is uh, higher, so we're gonna have to take some preload away from the spring to compensate for that. So we're down at 3.6 millimeters now, again, which is the ride height that we wanted. And we lift the suspension up. As you can see now, we have five millimeters there, so that means we'll have 1.4 millimeters of droop in the rear, which is a lot. So we can then reduce the droop again by tightening this up and uh, adding some preload back. 3.6 and one millimeter difference. So that's how quickly and easily you can adjust the, the pod droop. And keep in mind the pod droop and rear ride height are always uh, directly influenced by each other. So it all has to do with the center shock. And that's all I had on pole droop and ride heights.